I must be a glutton for punishment. Uh, I suggested Heather get a new car. She'd uh, kind of outgrown the Duke and needed something slightly bigger. And the Citroen C4, she had had a slightly slipping clutch, so it was time to get rid of those two. Um, unfortunately, I kind of suggested her into something a bit more unreliable, which has come to bite me in the ass a month later. So here it is. <sighs> So I've had no prior experience with Land Rovers, Range Rovers. I've never had one. I've never wanted one. Uh, however, when she was looking for a car, it kind of ticks all boxes. She's a, she's a Scouse girl, so tick, little scally car for her. Um, but one's something nice to waft around with, with the kids and stuff, and something nice and safe as well. Now, there's nothing safer than a Range Rover that doesn't bloody move, is there? So, uh, absolutely fine. Picked it up from down south, did five six hundred miles on it no bother at all now as the weather starts turning it's decided to fucking throw a hissy fit hasn't it so let's talk you through what's going wrong with this thing so it's not a massive bother in all honesty uh, it was struggling to start on some colder mornings so the battery it took off it was some proper naff ebay thing it looked like it had been underwater so i swapped it out for a battery out on the porsche they're about 300 quid it's an agm battery and it seems to be fine for a couple of days after that but then the dreaded just Alt alternator start the motor clicking all the time uh proper frustrating it'd take like five or six clicks to kind of get to go um but then it got to a point where it was taking a little bit longer and a little bit longer because the battery would be draining so obviously knew it wasn't the battery that's meant to have a uh, trickle charge as well just to make sure but colder mornings were really affecting it so add a little read these have a um what's it called a solenoid uh, that I like to stick in these. Now, the solenoid itself doesn't cost much, uh, but I've just picked up a brand new second-hand starter motor and solenoid. It should be three bolts to take it off to the motor and two for the power and ignition, I guess. Um, I'm no mechanic, by the way. I just like undoing things and putting things back together, so any criticisms, welcome. Um, especially about my Ryobi power tools. People hate on Ryobi. I don't care, they work. They're cheap. I'm not asked. Um, so I've got to get this off now. This little bugger down here. Uh, I've taken the airbox out ready. I've taken the intake off and the engine cover and stuff just to get a bit easier access to it. But there is one, two, there's three bolts there and then two. We've got a power cable and again, what I imagine is the ignition cable on there as well so ugh. it doesn't look like the nicest job to do I've watched some YouTube tutorials because yeah YouTube mechanic um, and I'm going to give it a tidy up afterwards as well because I quite like driving this as well so I've never been a fan of Range Rovers or Land Rovers but to be fair driving them quite nice big wafty bus so it's my Saturday so I'm going to disconnect the battery now because there is a power lead going to that alternator. Alternator? I keep calling it an alternator. There's a power cable going to that starter motor and I don't fancy it wafting around and sparking and stuff. So I'm going to crack that off now and try and contort my hands into places that they shouldn't go. So I must say while I'm doing this, there are other common factors that can like make this happen as well, which I have done before anyone jumps in the comments and going, yeah, I've done this. So the earth cable from the battery to the body, make sure that's clean. Make sure there's no broken wires going to the starter motor. Got it right that time. Uh, and they're the most common things really, unless there's like a bit of a broken loom somewhere, but nothing's ever been touched down here by the looks of it. Judging by the grime and stuff in there. So earth cable, tick, taken off, cleaned up, done that prior to this day, uh, just to see if it was that easy fix. Unfortunately, it wasn't. Uh, and it is a starter motor off eBay. They're not massive money. You can spend anywhere from 100 quid to 230 quid for an OEM one, I think. Uh, plenty of refurbed units around as well. Or try your luck with a second hand one. They're about 30 quid, but I wasn't risking that. So I hate fixing cars. Really handy to have spare parts in front of you. I can see here that I've got one, two, three bolts to remove before I get it off. Eight mil, 13 mil, and these are all 13 mil bolts as well. Um, so yeah, it's always a good reference point to have a look at when you're going for these things. 
so as you can see down there they're a bit of an awkward one the loom does come off for that i think there's an air strap attached to that as well which i will clean up there's one there that you can just see with a blue mark and there's one that you can't see just round there that's going to be a bit of a pain but to be fair that loom does just unclip this unclips it's fairly easy to get to so i don't think it's gonna to be too much either hopefully this fixes it because if not just burn the car out i suppose <laughs> Bit of a bugger to get out, a few scratch knuckles and stuff, but it's not the end of the world. Nice little hole down there to put the new one in. Let's have a look. So, here's my old one. Part number, blah, 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 blah. Same part number, very handy. Obviously, visually to look at, nothing wrong with it. Starter motor, absolutely fine. Teeth are still there. New one there, it's the solenoid of this side of things, I believe. Which you can buy a rebuild kit for, but for ease, I'm going to chuck that one on. Uh, they're not that expensive to rebuild, I don't believe. So I might keep hold of this one, rebuild it myself, and then just flog it on for a few quid more. Or I might return it for the surcharge. Who knows? See how I'm feeling. I'll have to wiggle me thing back into this. Not wrong with the exige, by the way. It's just on trickle charge. It's all right. I'm going to get a track day booked. I love doing cold track days because they're cheap up north. Uh, Alton Park, I think it's the 16th maybe. Look to get out and booked if it's not fully booked already. And if the weather's poo, I'll take the Twingo because I absolutely love that thing. And I'm going to do some more footage on that soon. Uh, it's such a cheap, funny car to just throw around little roads around here. Uh, whereas that can be a little bit too firm. But obviously that is more track focused. Track pack and all those bits and bobs on it as well. So tell you what though, this won't be going on tracks anytime soon. But big, wafty, comfy bus. If you are looking for something, well, like that, that doesn't cost a million pounds, um, I'd, I'd certainly consider it, say, aside from this little starter motor fault. It's actually a really good car. There's some nice spec in it, and I'll, uh, I'll show you around it a little bit later when I've managed to get this back on, scratch a few more fingers, uh, and show you the spec of it and stuff, because it's okay. It's not the highest spec car in the world, but it's got some nice bits on there, and it's nice and comfy to drive daily as well. Bit poo on fuel, but... Blah. One more thing to note before this goes back together, be cleaning all these electrical connectors that do go back onto the starter motor as well, just to give them, you know, better contact. They've been sat around for, I don't know, 12 years. I can't remember how old this car is. 12, 11, 12 years. Uh, giving them a good clean up so when they obviously do make better contact and there shan't be any issues going forward. Right, so we're all back together. Wasn't any dramas, didn't lose any bolts, didn't do any of that stuff that you usually do. Now's the moment of truth that says whether it's going to work. Otherwise, it's going to be an absolute bloody headache and something else. So, right, key in, start, put on brake. Started. Now, the weather is a bit nicer, so maybe it won't rear its head until later. But that's positive. I've got a gearbox fault. That's a new one. It might be the fact that the battery's been off. Might be the fact of the Land Rover, who knows? Bonnet open. DAB. There's your issue there, Range Rover. Now, is it still going to show a gearbox fault? Hopefully not. No, that's cleared, so it must have just been something random. Oh, hang on, gearbox fault. Uh, what's that gonna be? I reckon I drive it and see what happens. Right, test drive, let's make sure this gearbox light goes out. I imagine it's because the battery's been disconnected, reconnected, and it's not moved yet, but always concerning. Starts, that's a bonus. Any faults? Now the bonnet's down, it seems to have cleared. We might be onto a winner. We might be, we might not be. Car still moves, that's a bonus. So, why?
Right, let's go for a test drive, make sure this gearbox fault has disappeared. I have a passenger in the back, say hello Ava. Mm -hmm. Say hello, come on. Wow. Five years old yesterday, weren't you? Getting a bit naughty already. Any advice for naughty five-year-olds would be appreciated. So, what do we think of Mummy's new car, Ava? Good. Good? What do you like about it? Because it's got the centre armrest. It's amazing what kids enjoy in cars, isn't it? For me, the panoramic roof in this, a little bit, makes it nice and light in the interior. Black leather, unfortunately it's got the light headline and stuff, but that pan roof really makes a difference in here. Uh, as you'll see, just darkens it up a bit like, but it's a nice thing to have. I'm sure they're an absolute pain to replace. Don't want to damage it, but hey ho. You want to listen to Badder Dan by Chase and Status? I don't think YouTube would appreciate the copyright, to be honest, mate. We'll put it on in a second. How's that? No. No. no! What we do need in these cars is a bit of a screen like a limo, just to separate the kids from the front. That'd be ideal, wouldn't it? Or just a bag for your head, Ava. That'd be nice. You can stop going, yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay, well, I'll tell you what. We'll get round this corner. The gearbox fault seems to have cleared itself. And then we'll put your songs on. How's that? Which is another bonus of this car because it's got the. You can have in a sec, yeah. It's got the Meridian sound system, uh, so the stereo in this is pretty good. Uh, definitely better than the C4 she had previously, and the Duke. Now the Duke was a lovely car, but it was just a little bit on the small side. This is like a good combination between the C4, which was an absolute boat, massive, seven seats, put the whole street in there kind of thing, and the Duke, which looked actually bigger than it was um, it was always a bit cramped when we had the kids in the back if I had to sit in the front passenger seat my legs would be up by my ears kind of thing so this is a nice compromise between both cars and it saves insurance and tax in two cars as well you want butter dandan you've not mentioned it three times already <laughs> right let's listen to some tunes then so I will say I've never been a fan of SUVs in these mum cars. Uh, I think they sit too high and I think they're absolutely pointless. However, after driving one, I do quite like it. You do see above things. It's quite good for country roads that you can see over hedges that you can't in, you know, the Lotus and the Twingo and stuff like that. They're actually a really cool car. Plenty of room. Great for chucking the shopping in the back. Um, Off-road capabilities? Who knows? They're, uh, I've seen them described as a soft roader. Uh, I wouldn't want to risk taking it anywhere, but it can't be any worse than a 640D on wet grass, can it? So You're enjoying this, aren't you? Jesus. I'm not going to complain at that one. Uh, it's got all the bells and whistles from a car you kind of expect this age. It's got the pan roof, cruise control, auto lights, auto wipers, Meridian sound system, it's automatic. It's just dead effortless to drive. It's really nice, it's really quiet inside. And it's just a nice place to be. We've already done some decent journeys in this already. We did pick it up from Portsmouth, Portsmouth Ways. Drove all the way back to Liverpool, no bother at all. Um, like I say, hopefully that starts motor issue. Hopefully it was just that solenoid. It's driving absolutely fine now. There's no warnings on the dash. So I've put everything back. There was no bolts missing. I wasn't tempted to leave any out. It seemed quite straightforward to work on. Um, I know they get a lot of bother, these Evokes and Land Rovers and Range Rovers in general, don't they, for reliability. So I was doing a good bit of reading before we bought this car. This is the early 2.2 engine, um, which I believe is the better one to have. It's the later ones are an ingenious, ingenious or something like that, a two litre and a 2.2 as well, which seem to have problems. This is the six speed auto. I believe it's a ZF box, quote me if I'm wrong. I think ZF's in everything. Um, although we did spot a Ford sticker, so maybe I'm telling Porky's on that one. Um, but it drives nice and effortless. Sport mode, waste of time. Um, but yeah, it's just nice. Like it, it's it's not too bad to park. It's got a rear parking camera. It's got sensors. It's got all the bits that you kind of expect of a car this age. Um, CarPlay. It doesn't have CarPlay, but it has streaming off your phone, which is 99% there. I'm not really bothered about CarPlay. Um, it's got sat nav, uh, which it has been updated at some point in its life because there's a new road by ours that's featured on there as well, which is dead handy. Uh, fuel wise, what are we doing? Uh, bear in mind that this has been hair driving. Oh, hang on, it's it's been reset on the battery now. She gets mid 30s, uh, I'll get mid 40s driving it, and that's a mixture of like round town and motorway. You got a dinosaur back there, kid? <laughs> Amazing. Um, but yeah, like this is actually a really nice car. Took some time to find the right one. Did go to view one that was a similar age to this, similar miles to this. 
when I got underneath it, it looked like it had been underwater. It was terrible. It was rusted through. Uh, there's like a protector on the fuel tank on these, and they are prone to getting rusty. However, underneath this one's nice and clean. Uh, no major dings, scratches, anything. It's had a really easy life by the looks of it as well. So it's not going to have one now. My missus has got it. Heather drives like an absolute idiot, doesn't she? How does mummy drive, Ava? How does mummy drive? Yeah. Not well. <laughs> Air words, not mine. So who's the better driver, mummy or daddy? What, what does daddy do better? Are we being a bit shy today? Not as, uh, not as playful as that Porsche video because we're in a boring Land Rover, but you know what? My eyes being open to these, I wouldn't mind wafting around in one of these, you know, over the 640D in all honesty. Uh, it does everything so well. And yeah, I'm really impressed. So anyone who is a Range Rover basher, give them a try yourself. You know what? I've been converted. So I've remembered why I like little cars now low to the ground, because these are a pain in the bum to wash the roof. They're massive. The wheels are a nightmare to clean. I think I'll stick to small cars myself. <sighs> so there we have it for today. New starter motor, give it a little clean and run you through it. Uh, future little bits and bobs because we can never leave a car standard can we the chrome badges on the boot and the bonnet seem to have like faded a little bit um probably through chemicals cleaning and stuff i've got some chinese special black badges to put on there just to make it look a little bit better same with the grill as well the silver plastic which I'll, I'll show you now actually it looks like it's just had some chemicals on there which seems to have like reacted on there uh you'll see there it looks a bit naff doesn't it so Probably just pick up black grill for that. And yeah, I'm sure she'll be happy with it for as long as it lasts, which fingers crossed, it will last despite the Range Rover badge. Click like, click subscribe, leave some comments below. And yeah, see you on the next one.